Welcome to the Dr. Mungo Podcast. This is episode 127, and uh, we're just cruising through April here. Um, so this podcast is going to be more for my pimple popping community, you know, as uh, Martha Wood, who is one of my oldest and favorite subscribers. She always said, or she said, but I always say, I always repeat after her, come for the pops, stay for the inspiration. But this one's going to be for the folks who have come for the pops. It is going to be a hashtag ask Dr. Mudgill style podcast. Uh, we got a question from Reddit and we read it to you that we'll kind of get into the nitty gritty. So the question starts with a statement. It says recovery after epidermoid cyst removal. I'm in parentheses, a 26 year old male with no past medical history, close parentheses, an average runner and weightlifter who has had an epidermoid cyst about one centimeter in the skin of my upper back over my scapula. The cyst has been the same size for over a year and never been inflamed, but since I've lost around 30 pounds, good for you, it has become much more noticeable and I'm looking to get it removed. Regarding the incision and recovery time, what is the timeline usually for activity? How many weeks doing nothing to light activity like running to full activity as tolerated? Appreciate any guidance. Um, okay, so... Uh, that's a really, really good question, and uh, as someone who does a lot of surgical procedures, I answer this question, or I don't even really answer it. I advise my patients prophylactically, you know, what they can and can't do. Uh, so a couple of things. One is your cyst has been stable. It doesn't sound like it's very big. It's one centimeter. So if it's not bothering you, like from a functional perspective, you can actually do nothing about it. You know, you can just leave it there, and it'll probably just live symbiotically with you. But it sounds like, you know, you lost a lot of weight. It's becoming more cosmetically uh, prominent and it's, you know, it's bugging you. Understandable. Um, you've lost 30 pounds. So I'm, you know, I'm sure you're looking, feeling great. And you just want to get this bump on your back off you, which is, you know, totally reasonable. And I totally get it. Um, the problem is you're a really active guy. You run, you lift weights and, you know, that downtime it would drive, it's going to drive you nuts. Like it would drive me nuts. I also totally get that. So let me walk you through it. So when a cyst is removed, you know, basically you know, it's a small in-office surgical procedure. It takes about like 15, 20 minutes or so. And then stitches are placed. Um, those stitches need to stay in for a couple of weeks. So especially for um, a cyst on the back, uh, on, um, on an active person like yourself, you sound like you're very, very active. Uh, those stitches need to stay in place to optimize the wound healing process. Now, while the stitches are in place, which is a two week period generally, you do have to take it easy because the problem is if those stitches pop, then like wound healing is like a real pain. It's going to take you much longer than it should. It's going to actually put you out of commission for a much longer period of time than you need to be. So what I advise my patients like yourself who are like, you know, are very, very active. Sounds like you run and you lift weights. The running part of it really isn't that much of an issue. I mean, this is on your scapula, but if you're running, um, you know, maybe just, I would say, I wouldn't like sprint, like do like crazy sprints, but if you know you're, you're, you're jogging or running at, even at a brisk pace, there's really no contraindication there. So you'd probably continue with your running without issue. Now, again, your dermatologist or plastic surgeon, whoever removes this will after, you know, they'll kind of give you much more precise advice after doing the surgery. And I like kind of telling you, you know, like, okay, you know, this was like skin closed really easily. There's not a lot of tension, so you can run or, or it's under a lot of tension, you know, maybe wait a little while before you start running, but in most cases you'll be able to run. The weightlifting is kind of where you fall, fall into trouble. Um, so you could lift legs, you know, um, if you're using like machines, you know, you could do like leg press and leg extensions, leg curls, that sort of stuff. Squats might be an issue just because of where, you know, the bar might lie on your, you know, upper back um, and some of the tension that it might put on, you know, on the the uh, excision site itself certainly like shoulders back chest are out you know until the stitches come out so you're looking for like a two, there's basically like a two week period maybe a little bit longer than that where any type of weightlifting maneuvers that are putting tension on the stitches those gotta you know kind of fall at the wayside um again for someone who's active like yourself like most folks who lift a lot they will have like a couple of times during the year where they do something called deloading and they just give their muscles a rest from lifting. Um, so for you, you might want to time that surgical procedure around, you know, if you do deload, which, you know, I mean, I think most folks would agree you probably should. Um, you, should kind of, you know, you can time it around that. 
Um, and like I said, you could still do cardio. You could still run. You could still do, you know, you know, like some leg stuff using machines. I would avoid upper body exercises, particularly stuff that puts a lot of tension on the back, which is pretty much, you know, shoulders, chest, back, all that sort of stuff is out. You know, maybe some light arms you could do. Um, but anything you do, you have to be very, very, very mindful of the tension that it's putting on the wound. And part of that will be like how the, how the, um, repair is made and that kind of depends on how your skin falls so sometimes the repair is made uh vertically where you know sort of tension like this puts a lot of uh you know movements like that rather put a lot of tension on the wound uh, or sometimes oriented horizontally where you know sort of like motions like that you know kind of you know when your back moves and you know, kind of bends down that might put a lot of tension um on, on the on the incision side so Again, the, at the time of surgery, once the sutures are placed, your surgeon will tell you, you know, hey, this is how the sutures are. This is what you need to avoid. Uh, but it's very important that you follow those instructions pretty much to a T um, because you don't want that two weeks of downtime to turn into like four to six weeks of downtime because those stitches pop, you're not going to be happy. So I hope that answers your question. And I hope this information is helpful for folks. And I know a lot of folks come to my channel to take a look at their cyst surgeries because they're having cyst surgeries themselves. Kind of want to get a sneak peek into what they might be experiencing. Um, so, you know, this would be applicable to you for any type of surgery, whether it's lipoma, cyst, or, you know, something else that has to be removed from your skin. So with that, I hope you all have a wonderful, restful weekend. Let's get it.